Today on Unity Motorsports Garage, we take a field trip. We go visit a legendary drag racing pro stock team of none other than Sox and Martin. We get to talk with Buddy Martin and Herb McCandless. You don't want to miss this one. Red, white, and blue is McCandless. Thank you's on the far side. Pro stock title on the line right now. And it's McCandless the winner. You never been so happy in your life, Herb? Congratulations. Thank you very much. That's the first big one for you, huh? Yes, sir, in the pro stock, I'm really happy. I just don't know what to say. <laughs> Ronnie Sox would be sitting down out of that tree kind of green. Yeah. <laughs> Ronnie's he has some transmission trouble. It's just one of those things. It's, I'd really be lucky and fast a lot of times. You really had to put the pressure on equipment this year, though, didn't you? Yes, we really did. We really pushed the cars hard. This was the toughest field of cars I've ever seen. Herb, you did a great job. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. So the young man from Burlington, North Carolina, Herb McCandless, wins his first major title at 27 years of age in the Sox and Martin Duster. So here we are at McCandless Antique Auto Museum here in Burlington, North Carolina. And this is the car that changed Herb's life. The 1970 Duster that won the 1970 inaugural pro stock race at Indy. This is actually a replica because the first car was damaged in a fire. But this is as true as they could possibly build to the original car. Herb even told us that this car changed his life in 1970. So, pretty awesome stuff. We're going to have fun today. First, I want to give a shout out to my brother Steve for going up there and doing the video work for me, doing these interviews with these fantastic gentlemen. I want to apologize for the background noise that's taking place during the interviews. And yes, you will see more of the museum once the interviews are finished. So now it's onward to Buddy Martin. I'm big into history. I'm on YouTube yeah. doing history, history videos on Pro Stock. Uh, I, I think it's safe to say to call you the father of Pro Stock. So you presented it to the NHRA. Yeah. So, yeah, that was in October of 69. Yeah. So did y'all use the AHRA's Heads Up Super Stock to kind of go off of it, or just all you, Jenkins, Nicholson, and who else was involved? Wally in Booth and uh, Al Jarnick and, you know, yeah, different Tom. ones got yeah. together uh, and put that together. When Jenkins brought out that 70, what did y'all do? Well, we didn't like it. First of all, yeah. In 71 is when the NHRA decided to put the 100 pound of weight on it. Yeah. And uh, we knew that that was going to be tough. And then at the same time, we allowed the, the short hill base cars yeah. and the uh, small block. Yeah. And uh, it just uh, it was just downhill. And, uh, we tried our best to tell. Yeah. Which, uh, as a matter of fact, I flew to California and sat down with Jack Hart, who was vice president of the competition. Yeah. And the NHRA and told him, you know, what was going to happen. And he actually looked me straight in the eye and he said, if we can have Ford and Chevrolet race against each other, I'm really not concerned about what Christ does. Wow. Yeah. And that had to make you feel a certain kind of way. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. I'm sure you know. Yeah. But if you look back, George Hurst died on the cost of Mr. Berry. Yeah. The next three years. Did y'all ever contemplate going to the small block oh and trying God. to run under those rules? Or thought about it. Jeez. It was just that we had spent so much, much time money. and so much money, and Jay had so much invested in it. Yep. Any platform. Exactly. It, it would be a whole new learning. Curve. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, Jenkins was already doing small block engines for yeah. people and stuff, so he had, he had a leg up. <laughs> uh, another question I got for you. Who was the first person to bring out the lean code? Because I know that changed everything. Oh. Landy. Landy. Yeah. Landy was the one. Right. 
hates him because if you ever saw a big run, yeah. he was murdering. <laughs> oh, yeah. The full speed transmission. I've always wondered who was the person who started that, and then that, that took the driver out of the equation, so to speak. It was fast. Yeah, he, you know, and being from California, you know, where he was, you was know, yeah. yeah. kind of a natural, but yeah. it got to happen. Now, now we, uh, the first time that we actually put the Lenco in our car, Ron ran quicker with the Chrysler transmission than he did with the Lenco. Really? Yep, sure did. Wow. That ain't hard to do. That's <laughs> unbelievable. I wish he was still here with us. Well, the whole lot of people wish he was like her. So, I know y'all split up in 74, right? I had a buddy of mine at work who told me that in 79 there was a Dodge Omni that had Socks and Martin on the side of it. Was that something that Ronnie just did, or did y'all actually get back together? Well, we actually got back together for that, and it was in uh, 1980. To 1980. Yeah, we ran that car. And he was with the small black engine. Yeah. And of course, uh, Jake had already moved on to other things, and we had the uh, diamond yeah. engine in Detroit do the small block. Work. Okay. But they again hadn't spent you know, that much time on the small block drag race, and so that glidden uh, just kicked up butt, really. Yeah. And, uh, but it, uh, yeah, they. It just changed a whole lot of things, there was no doubt. Did y'all, I know that y'all remained pretty good friends all out, because y'all all from around here or lived around sure. here. How far away are we actually from where the actual Sox and Martin building was at? A mile. A mile? Yeah. I figured it was yeah. close. Yeah. Is there anything left of it or is it all gone now? Yeah, no, no, the building's still there. The UPS went in and got the you know, left. Okay. And uh, then we sold the building and uh, a church was in there for quite a long time. And now there is a uh, promotional company that's occupied. Okay. Hmm. We'll have to check that out on the way out. You know, actually, you can go two different ways. You can. Turn right when you go out of the building here. Yeah. Go right down to the stop sign there and turn right. Yeah. Then that'll take you around to it. Or okay. you can turn left and go up and go. stop sign. Okay. Take a left and go to it. Okay. Yeah. Well, buddy, I appreciate you talking to me, man. And it's an honor to get to meet you and hope to get to see you again. I hope so, too. So I, I had one question. Yeah. What's the most money you ever won in a match race? Do you remember? Normally, it ran about 1,500. Right. A race, but sometimes it would, you know, go 2,000, 2,500, and there was a few times that it was, you right. know, a thousand. When we first started out, it was 500. Yeah. And you know, it kept going up. That's the before middle. everything went up. Right. That was still a lot of money in oh, that time frame. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, you was my hero growing up because that duster. I just want you to know that I was I was born in '79, grown up with a duster, and I remember seeing a picture of you at Indy, man, and it just <laughs> that was, you never know. That, that was the biggest day of my life. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, you stand enough. That meant nothing. Yeah. One of my favorite pictures. Of all the pictures we've got, it's that one. Oh, wow. I think about yeah. that. Yeah. I pulled up and got out of that car, and there were hundreds of people surrounding that car. And you can't explain to people what that's like. Yeah. The feeling. Friends with uh, Tim Halstead. I think you did a oh, live yeah. chat with I him. Did. I did. I'm, I'm here in the Motorsports Garage on YouTube. And, uh, I'm a huge fan of the Mo Motown missile. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. And I have something that, if you don't mind, I would like for you to look at. Sure. I got two Dominator carburetors that supposedly come off of the missile. Okay. And it's got missile road on the side of the box. It does. I have the original box. All right. So. All our, our original carburetors were always built by. Uh, uh, but. Uh, 
John Bowman. John Bowman. John, uh, he, was the, he was a magician on him. He was, but there's, I learned later on that those carburetors weren't in sight. I mean, they weren't really, hand, they were hand built, but they weren't really that special. Right. Um, you know, like today, people really, you know, put a lot more science in them. But John's carburetors were really good, don't get me wrong. And we weren't allowed to touch them. We could take the lean set off and put the rich set on, but we couldn't. We weren't wow. allowed to yeah, reach at him or anything. He wouldn't let you go inside of him. When, Donnie, when, uh, Donnie, when our program ended, Don, when, you know, he had already moved it back here in North Carolina and had his shop over in Hudson. And he, he, he had a couple of match race cars. And they were, they looked just like the missile, except they said Don Carlton on yeah. the side. One had just Dodge on the rear quarter and the other one had Springs Road Auto Sales. And uh, he would come to Michigan uh, for like a match race or something up at Milan, and I would go out there and help him. And there's a picture, I think, of Donnie, myself, and, and young Don, who was just a teenager then at Milan. Uh, and that I get to the track that day, and he says, the first thing he says is, says, take those carburetors off, we start changing this and that. Oh, okay. okay, well, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. I don't ever get to do this, you know. So yeah, we had a good time. But, you know, they were no longer Bowman carburetors. Or if they were Bowman carburetors, they weren't test carburetors, so we could do anything we wanted. To. Scott, this had to be early because it was IR. Yeah. Yeah, that's early. Because all this stuff would have been cut off later. Yeah. I took the arrow. It's like they've been in a time capsule. Yeah. Now I'm working with me doing stuff with diesel trucks. I wore it all around diesel pickup trucks now. And I'm okay with that. You only run the IR setup for one year, one or two years, one year. Digital world is definitely a whole lot different. It was early. Early. Yeah. Everybody will dominate Yep. I got the match to it out in the truck. But with yeah. all that stuff, this is cool. It's a box. It's a box. So, you get the man to look at it. Well, some But when I seen that on the box, man, it's like, yeah. it really got my curiosity, you know? Oh, yeah. So, racing and stuff? Oh, yeah. Okay. I'll be. He bought Dave Young's Barracuda, right? I should uh, yeah. take it. Oh, he did. Okay. 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 That's a different car. Okay. I was thinking that was Dave. Okay. That's a strategy. When talking about the 4-speed era of Pro Stock, most people don't realize just how fast these cars progressed in a short amount of time. As you can see, this engine is equipped with the IR tunnel ram setup, which worked but was not as good as the plenum style. This car started out as a basic slant 6 car and as you will see, has a 3-point bolt-in Lakewood roll bar. It had stock suspension, leaf springs, but by 72, things had changed dramatically. You notice the dual plug Hemi heads and the plenum intake is on there. And this, make no mistake about it, was a purpose-built race car. If you want to learn more about it, watch Herb McCandless' documentary. You will see just how far Pro Stock progressed in a short amount of time. What you're looking at here is Herb McCandless' first race car. Yes, they found it in this condition, and they plan on leaving it that way. But notice the sign down below, Lakeland Dragway. This place was located in Memphis, Tennessee, and was actually pretty famous and was featured in a 1971 film, Tulane Blacktop, one of my most favorite movies of all time. So it's pretty cool that Herb McCandless' home drag strip was actually the track where Tulane Blacktop was made. If you're into Mopars, I highly recommend that you check this museum out. The memorabilia is unreal regarding Mopar, DeSoto, Chrysler, and in fact, what you're getting ready to see here is the very first Chrysler 300. 
this car was built to compete on the 1955 Daytona 500 serial number 0001 how cool is that but the fun doesn't stop there if you're in the Ford look Chrysler's man this place is unreal the amount of detail that Herb and his sons have put into this museum is second to none I mean there is so much history located in this building in Burlington North Carolina I really hate that I didn't get to spend more time with Herb but he was totally covered up with people and I understand that and they're there to see their heroes as well so it's not up to me to hog that time but the things that I got to see on this day with my brother was just truly amazing and Herb McCandless will always be a hero of mine as you can see what he has done was phenomenal and no matter what Herb McCandless will go down in history because he is the first to win Pro Stock Championship at the U.S. Nationals in 1970. It was an honor to get to do this, and I can't wait to catch up with him again. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of the McCandless Antique Auto Collection. It is freaking awesome. If you're ever in Burlington, North Carolina, which is near the triad area you really need to make a point to check it out you may be asking why am i in front of this building in the parking lot right because we're out in the middle of nowhere well folks what you don't know is that building was the home of Sox and martin race team i'll put a picture of it in so that you can see it back in the day but uh when we were talking to buddy martin I asked him just how close we were to the shop, and he said, oh, yeah, it's still there. He said, you're less than a mile away. So, Brother Steve and I, we got in the truck, come over here, and found this, and just thought we'd like to show it to you that the building still stands where Sox and Martin made history.